Welcome to Homestyle Southern Cooking, where we feature Missouri Southern's brightest and finest. On today's show, we have Kristen Hanna, a senior mass communication major here at Missouri Southern. She will be talking about her semester abroad in London and showing us how to make her world-renowned mahi-mahi in basil butter sauce. Then later, I'll show you how to make two comparable recipes in a dorm-approved cooking appliance. One, a delicious mahi-mahi with broccoli and asparagus in the crock pot, and a peppercorn encrusted ahi tuna seared in a waffle iron. So come on, let's get started. Style Southern Cooking. Today's guest is Kristen Hanna. Hey girl. How are you doing today, Terry? Good. Are you excited to be here? I'm so excited to be here and cook with you. I mean, you are one of the most fantastic cooks I know, especially at the crock pot. So <laughs> well, I'm just glad to have you here because you're kind of like a mass communication superstar. I don't know about that. I do. <laughs> You've got window on the world that you're doing. Correct. You used to uh, announce for games. Correct, and I'll do that again this fall. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, and there's some new stuff happening with the football stadium, you know, the end zone facility and everything that's going on. So it's going to be a really good football season. I'm excited. You got back just in time for that because you were gone. Yeah. You were gone for a whole semester. Can Ex you tell us where you were? That's right. I was in London. Oh, yeah, London. London. England. Yeah. Is it so, different there? It is quite a bit different. I wouldn't say it's drastically different, but going from an English-speaking country like the United States to an English-speaking country like England, do you think that it's going to be easier right off the bat to communicate? Yes. So I think you get more frustrated with your expectations of going there. That I met some amazing, amazing people um, from all over the world, you know. I just, I think I thought I was going to London, I was going to meet a lot of Brits, a lot of English people, but then I ended up meeting African people. I ended up meeting people that were from Japan, you know. I ended up meeting people that were from the Middle East, India. It's very a, diverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two of my flatmates are actually, one's from Nigeria, one is from um, New Delhi, India. So, nice. yeah, so a lot of different culture that I, I guess I didn't expect, but it was awesome. It was very rewarding. So I'm curious about the food. Now, I, I'm a foodie, obviously, mm -hmm. but I've, I've heard some things that come out of England or London that, that totally scare me, like blood pudding or like, oh. did you have Bangers any? Bangers and mash. Bangers and mash, right? Yeah. It, did, did you have stuff like that? What was um, your craziest thing you ate? It was that, the that. sausage and mash, um, and then is probably some Is it bangers the, and mash is what they call yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And, and so um, that along with some types of pie, which the meat pies were pretty w good, but sometimes they start throwing in weird things like <laughs> pig's eyeballs and things <laughs> like that. And some like, but it's some of the places that are really um, more across England and Scotland right. as okay. well. Yeah, into Scotland, they have some of these kind of different dishes that I did not try. I was not brave enough. But <laughs> the bangers and mash was not really my favorite thing. Granted, I don't really like sausage, so if somebody likes yeah. sausage, they it might, might like good. it. What yeah. was your favorite thing you tried over there? Oh, I, I had so much good Indian cuisine, actually. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't think that. Yeah, exactly, but there's just such a Middle Eastern influence nice. on England because it's just closer, you know. Um, we have Middle Eastern people come here, but there's so many more people that have settled there right. for such a time, uh, especially when immigration laws were different there and they allowed people from across Europe and the Middle East and Africa to come in in the 1940s after the World War II happened when they had all the soldiers that, you know, passed away and things, right. they they started opening up their borders so that people could come in and families could come in and start, you know, giving back to the economic status and, you know, start flourishing in and London. Rebuilding. Yeah, 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 especially. So just so much cool history I learned about there that I just had really no idea about because you wow. look at history from a standpoint of every um, every kind of place has their own teachings because right. there's different importance and impactful um, things that have happened within our history, but then I'm like, you know, but English history is a lot of our history too. So right, it it's totally interesting is. to they're, see. They're yeah. Our forefathers. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also with World War II, we didn't see as much of, of what happened there, but they did. So just cr traveling not only to England but across Europe yes. and seeing, you know, the different influences of history on them is quite interesting. Was it hard to come home? 
Yeah. Do you want to? I, I want to travel. You want to go back, mm -hmm. don't Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to go back to London, but I want to travel to so many other places because I'm on, on window of the world. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to people that have gone to Costa Rica and you know stayed in Spain for a while and. I think it'd be a really neat experience. You've gotten bitten by the travel bug. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so had, now you're back at Missouri Southern. Mm -hmm. Did you take a lot of your influence from Missouri Southern to London? Did mm -hmm. you educate some people on the Midwest? Yeah, and that's the thing is, <laughs> people in England really want to know about the states, and they want to know everything that I want to know about England. So. Uh, the trade of culture is magnificent. Did they expect you to be kind of John Wayne-ish, or were they like more advanced than that? You know, oh, you're definitely from more the Midwest. Oh, yeah, definitely more advanced. They love to talk about the United States, the culture, the entertainment here. So it's just, like I said, a trade-off, a really great trade-off of culture. Well, I'm also curious if you showed them your great mahi-mahi recipe. Oh, I cooked for some of my colleagues a couple of times, but I did not cook mahi-mahi as much. I didn't, I didn't cook as much fish because yeah. the meat there is really, it's pretty good meat. You yeah. know, they have free-range chickens and, um, and beef and everything like that, so it's nice. Well, they missed out on what we're about to learn, so come back after this, and we're going to have some mahi-mahi with Chris and Hannah. The Marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse is the best place in town for organic produce. The Marketplace houses Joplin's only organic coffee bar, featuring fresh local coffee beans. They have a wide variety of organic and gluten-free items, as well as local products including milk, eggs, chocolate, and fresh meats. So go visit the friendly and helpful staff at 2820 East 32nd Street in Joplin, in the Food for Less parking lot. The Missouri Southern State University Bookstore is your place to find all things MOSO. We have a wide selection of Missouri Southern apparel and gear to choose from, so you'll have no problem showing your lion pride. Our bookstore is also the place to find books and other supplies required for class. So whether you need apparel, books, or just a snack, come out to the Missouri Southern Bookstore located in the Billingsley Student Center on the campus of Missouri Southern State University. At Missouri Southern, we believe achieving a university education should be possible for everyone. That is why we are working hard to make earning a university education accessible and always an excellent value. As a graduate of Missouri Southern, you should expect to reach your career goals. Take a look at our graduates in health sciences, teacher education, business, or biology. Their success can be yours. Come check out Missouri Southern, apply for admission, and see where your academic career can take you. to Homestyle Southern Cooking. We're here with Kristen Hanna and we're going to make some mahi-mahi in the pan. That's pretty exciting. Exactly. So it's just going to be seared. Mm -hmm. um, like I said to you before, you can grill it and then for you, crock pot it. So whatever you want to do and you just start off by seasoning the mahi-mahi. I do it with just a little salt and pepper and this is a pretty good size of mahi-mahi. So It's a beautiful piece. Yeah, it is. So we got this at the this? marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse. They okay. have the best meat and produce selection in town, I think. <laughs> and so then we'll start, I like garlic a lot, so putting the garlic on here and getting that together. Okay, um, so a I lot like, of garlic. And some of the garlic salt is good too. So we've got this starting to like kind of sear a little bit in here. Um, and we have the basil chopped up, but we won't add that quite yet. Okay. Um, I like fresh basil, but you can use the... Well, like I usually use well, uh, traditionally you can use like a like a dry basil. Correct. But I like to use this basil here. It's like a lighthouse basil where you can add water to it and it, it becomes fresh basil again. That garlic and you can, is looking really nice and Exactly. Brown. And if uh, if you want to, you can add a little butter if you'd like more right. sauce. But obviously we don't. I didn't bring don't. the butter because I'm on a health kick. Yep. Just olive oil. So we did have olive oil that was kind of uh, starting to heat up mm -hmm. before we put the mahi-mahi in there. So we're just going to leave it on there. Probably this thickness of mahi-mahi could use a good three or four minutes on each side. Okay. So probably have the heat a little bit down toward like low medium because you want it to cook all the way through. Right. Yeah. So did you, did you do a lot of cooking in the dorm rooms? Uh, whenever I was in the dorms, I used the George Foreman. Like I said, uh, you know, I could cook things like this. I could cook meat and, and protein because I think... I don't know who was the guest on here talking about the, the calf food, mm -hmm. but just that it's unbearable at times to continue to eat it. You Constantly, know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So having it sometimes where you don't have to cook your own food is great, but then having a grill where you can cook, you know, a nice dinner if you'd like to is 
really good. So a George Foreman is a dorm approved cooking appliance. I don't know about that, but I did I use her husband. I heard it is. She did not do anything wrong. <laughs> okay. It is a dorm approved good, appliance. Good, good, because I know that crock pots are okay, but Yes, and I'm waffle sure. irons and George Foreman's and mm -hmm. some other things, the toaster awesome. oven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot so, you can do. I did cook uh, quite a bit in the dorms, I guess, for the things that I had, and then my teammates would cook some stuff. I mean, some of them from New Orleans, so they were had their um, little burners out, which mm -hmm. I don't know if those are dorm yeah. proof. <laughs> yeah, and like cooking rice and things like that yes. for jambalaya. <laughs> they really whipped it in the dorms. I'm sure they I'm used not all dorm approved cooking appliances. Yes, of course. I'm sure they of did. Course. So, but then you are a very healthy girl. You're kind of like a health nut. Well, I don't know about. A little bit, a little bit. Well, you're so. an athlete too. Yeah. Okay. I want to say actually, before I quit basketball, I didn't eat as healthy because I knew that I was always going to have work it off. Yeah, work it off, and you know, I could kind of allow my cravings to take hold. But now that I don't, I uh, I like to cook a lot of fish with brown rice or okay. white rice, and um, try to stay as healthy as possible. A lot of salad too. Well, you're not just done with athletics because you're not on the basketball team anymore. You teach yoga, am I correct? Correct, yeah, at so, the rec center. At the rec center here yeah. on campus. Correct. When do you do that? Um, I do that on Monday and Wednesday at 12 in the okay. summer, but um, during the school year it'll probably be a bit different, but you can go to the rec and check it out. Nice, nice. Yeah, the so schedule will be up. Yoga with Krista, Han Chris and Hannah, that'd be perfect. Because that's very healthy and athletic. Yeah. I don't think I could. <laughs> have you done stretches. yoga before? I could. I'm yeah. lying. I never have. <laughs> We should, though. This is a challenge, right? I have to come to your class so yes, come exactly. to my show. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So next Monday, I'll yoga. see her here. That's right. Yeah. I'll be doing yoga. The, the dogging and the sun rising and stuff. <laughs> so it looks like we might be ready to flip okay. the mahi-mahi now. Okay. I don't know if we have these skills. This is a huge piece of mahi-mahi. Well, it's a beautiful piece, that's for so, sure. Yes, oh, and I love how dark so and nice. impressive that. Can you, yeah. like, maybe lift that so we can see that? Yeah. Is there any way they can see that? Look how beautiful that side looks. And that's yeah. what you want both sides to look at. So during this time, we can start grabbing just a little bit of the basil and allowing uh, a little sprinkling over the mahi-mahi. Nice. But um, I don't like to cook basil too long. Yeah, it uh, takes its flavor. It kind of burns yeah. it. So oh what are you going to do after graduation? Like, you're going to travel. Are your parents going to be super sad? They're gonna, are they going to start traveling with you? What oh, you I think, think we're going to all start traveling together. It's going to be a really good time. And um, hopefully, I mean, I'll be in St. Louis probably after I graduate. I'm not quite sure. I mean, if something takes from. me somewhere else. I don't think else, we mentioned that, but you are right. from St. Louis. Exactly. So if something takes me somewhere else, then I'm more than happy to go along for the ride. But yeah. as far as after school, I see myself for at least a couple of months being in St. Louis and kind of grounding myself. Yeah, so. being with your family again, that'll be so I nice. know, it's been so long since I feel like I've had more than, you know, a month or so with my family because four hours away, I mean, usually I'm not driving back and forth all that much. And like you said, you're a jet setter, so. Oh, whatever. <laughs> you so said you know, that. I did say that, I said that. So you want to try the show me thing? Um, yeah, it looks like it's about done. I'm gonna, if it's cool with you, take yeah, a little bit more of this lemon. Yeah, I'm gonna do everything, anything you want after. Um, here, some pepper. You want me to cut another lemon some for you? Some lemon, yeah, that'd be perfect. And then just squeeze mm -hmm. a bit over the rice, too. Oh, yeah, here, let's do that. We're gonna get our and we'll rice put a nice little and lemony. Basil on the rice as well. Ooh, that's a good idea. I love how you plate this. Looks like this is about to be yummy, yummy. That is gorgeous. And then you have a little bit of good juice here. Mm -hmm. Olive oil. Pour right lemon. over that. Yep. Oh, I love that so and garlic. much. I have so. to lean back here and grab us a fork. Okay. Because we're eating it right here. Or spoons. spoons. <laughs> we're just completely fine. <laughs> or have spoons because we're out For of forks. For rice. For rice. Yes. <laughs> so here, let's go on this side. Where I'm so excited to try this. Yes, I'm excited for you to try it. You have to be honest and tell me what you think. As you see, it's like super meaty. You know what I'm saying? So, this is so good. That lemon on the rice and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a nice fresh flavor. I mean, you think about summer like lemons and fish. It's really good. And it's healthy. Mm -hmm. And you can get it right here in town. So perfect. Yes. Well, thank you for joining us, Kristen. Thank you for having this me. This is the best time ever. Thank yeah, you so much. This has been a really great time. So join us later, and I'll show you how to make a mahi mahi in the crock pot as well as nahi tuna in the waffle iron. That's right, so thanks for joining us. You stand beside me each Saturday, wrapped up against the crisp fall chill and driving rain. Scarf around your neck to protect your clean shaven face. 
muttering underneath your breath and cursing at the refs. You always keep a folded program in your back pocket. They say you've been coming here for years, that you were the original fan. You remember seeing Rod Smith run and even saw the championship in 72. You are the murmur of the crowd and the waves of applause dancing along the field. You are the roar of the score and the shh before. You are the disappointed sigh and the laughter among the children. You often smile as you head for the exits with the drum still pounding in your ears. I doubt I'll ever know your name. But they say you are a lion backer. Catch complete coverage of Joplin City Council meetings only on KGCS TV, Channel 22, keeping the citizens of the Joplin, Missouri area informed and in the know for the past 30 years. Live at 6 p.m., first and third Mondays of each month, rebroadcast on the first and third Tuesdays of each month. Catch Joplin City Council only on KGCS TV, Channel 22. two really yummy recipes and dorm approved appliances. So first we're going to make a mahi mahi in the crock pot. And this is a pretty simple recipe. We're going to take some asparagus and asparagus is super easy to work with. You don't even really need a knife. Wherever it breaks natural is its breaking point. So that's perfect. So you just want to break it. We've already rinsed these. So what we're doing is laying these in the bottom. We're creating kind of like a, like a shelf for our ahi tuna to sit on. And then we're going to break off these nice little pieces of broccoli. We like the tree part, not the stem. So this is so simple. Now we put a bunch of broccoli in here. As many as one to two people are going to like, because this is a big piece of meat. It's, you know, it's going to feed a couple people. So we have our, our vegetables in the crock pot. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a little sauce for our ahi tuna, we're going to put olive oil in a pan with a little garlic. So here on a little plate, okay? And so I'm going to take crushed red peppers. A lot of people don't have these on hand, but we all get pizza. So here's this great little way to recycle these little crushed pepper pizza packets. So we'll put that in there, and then we'll put some salt and pepper, because you definitely want to season this to your own specifications. So we've got that, and I'm going to add a little bit of instant fresh basil, because I just love that stuff. And now I've got me like a little coating I can use. So I'm going to mix this up. It is just so beautiful. It smells good too, very fresh. And I'm going to take this beautiful piece of mahi-mahi. I'm going to dip it like this in both sides, really coat it up with this beautiful sauce. And now I'm going to... Then add a little lemon to that. And then I'm going to put this beautiful piece of meat right here on top of the shelf of vegetables I have created. So all the flavor will cook down into the vegetables. And then we're going to coat them with this beautiful oil we made like that. Very simple. And we're going to put some more olive oil in it. Because the more juice you add is the more your vegetables are going to be able to steam. Now this is such a simple recipe, now it's done. Literally all you have to do is cook it three to four hours on low. If you want to cook it faster, high, one and a half, two hours tops. Now if this were a different kind of meat like tilapia, you'd only want to cook it about 90 minutes. So keep an eye on this, this isn't something you can really walk away from. So we're going to set that there right now. And I'm going to show you an awesome cool recipe of how to make an ahi tuna seared in a waffle iron. Yep, that's right, waffle iron. So what I've done is I have crushed down some peppercorn. Some whole peppercorns I've crushed down in this with a little cup. It's very easy. And then I've taken a plate and I've added some salt and just a touch of cayenne pepper. And I'm going to add my crushed peppercorns. Now I'm going to add a little lemon, I mean a little olive oil and garlic to that mix. And definitely some lemon. You want it to get wet. You want that to be a little moist. So, 
We're going to get that nice and even. And then we're going to encrust our tuna in that. It's a beautiful piece of tuna here. If you don't have as much money, you might want to go the tuna recipe, then the mahi-mahi, different prices in the pieces of fish, but they're still pretty reasonable. So now we're over here with our waffle iron. It's hot, sprayed it down. I'm going to put that on it right there. It seems crazy. Just do it. And that's not going to take very long. So what you would do now is clean your kitchen. But since I don't like to clean my kitchen so much, I'm going to show you my crock pot mahi mahi. Look at that beautiful thing there. So this is what we got for the crock pot dish. And now we're going to take a little bowl here. We're going to add a little soy sauce. Doesn't take long. We're going to add a little bit of wasabi because I love this. Kind of like raw tuna. It's kind of like sushi so we're making a little sushi side. We'll again take this. It's got all this flavor on it. We're going to stir it up. Now in that short time that I have showed you my other recipe and made this nice little dish, we have already completed this ahi tuna. It's that fast. So I'm going to put it on this beautiful plate here. It's okay that this stuff is on there because it's just your seasonings. So now we're going to turn this over and we're going to cut this open here for you. It's so tender I can just use it with my, with my little you know, tool there, not even a knife. I'm going to dip it down in here. Now you see how it's a little raw there? That's exactly what you want. Ahi tuna is like a sushi. So I've dipped it into my little wasabi soy sauce mix and mm-hmm. That's dorm cooking made easy, y'all. So thanks for joining us in the Homestyle Southern Cooking. We'll be back in a moment. The Missouri Southern State University Bookstore is your place to find all things MOSO. We have a wide selection of Missouri Southern apparel and gear to choose from, so you'll have no problem showing your lion pride. Our bookstore is also the place to find books and other supplies required for class. So whether you need apparel, books, or just a snack, come out to the Missouri Southern Bookstore located in the Billingsley Student Center on the campus of Missouri Southern State University. At Missouri Southern, we believe achieving a university education should be possible for everyone. That is why we are working hard to make earning a university education accessible and always an excellent value. As a graduate of Missouri Southern, you should expect to reach your career goals. Take a look at our graduates in health sciences, teacher education, business, or biology. Their success can be yours. Come check out Missouri Southern, apply for admission, and see where your academic career can take you. I love all this produce you got at the marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse, but I'm not seeing any lettuce. Oh no, you know, I forgot the lettuce. Oh, what are we gonna do for a salad? We'll make a quick pickle. What in the world is that? You could just make a nice little pickle. So what we'll do here is we'll put a bunch, probably about two cups of vinegar in here. That's a lot, right? We're gonna add about a half a cup of sugar. You could add more if you like it. And I'm gonna take this top off right here because I like a lot of salt. I'm going to add some salt to that pickle. Now we're going to stir that up. Now I've already got our cucumbers and onions done for our salad, but let's just add those together and not worry about our lettuce and tomatoes and stuff. Let's pour that right over there. And then you know what? In about an hour, we're going to have pickled cucumbers and onion. The Marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse is the best place in town for organic produce. The Marketplace houses Joplin's only organic coffee bar, featuring fresh local coffee beans. They have a wide variety of organic and gluten-free items, as well as local products including milk, eggs, chocolate, and fresh meats. So go visit the Friendly and Helpful staff at 2820 East 32nd Street in Joplin, in the Food for Less parking lot. Catch complete coverage of Joplin City Council meetings only on KGCS-TV, Channel 22, keeping the citizens of the Joplin, Missouri area informed and in the know for the past 30 years. Live at 6 p.m., first and third Mondays of each month. Rebroadcast on the first and third Tuesdays of each month. Catch Joplin City Council only on KGCS-TV, Channel 22.
promotional consideration has been provided by Pearl Brothers True Value, proud sponsor of Missouri Southern State University. Welcome back to Homestyle Southern Cooking. We're in the dining room. I'm joined with my producer, Tawny Lyon. Hey, girl. How are you? I am so good. Yeah? Did you enjoy the show? We had the best show today. Yeah, she is so nice. I love Kristen Hanna. Mm -hmm. She's kind of like a star in the communications department. You know, she really is. <laughs> she has made me want to travel. I know her stories about London and just everywhere she went. Yes. Oh, I just wanted to go there. <laughs> I have been to Jamaica, but that is it, as far as out of the United States. Now I want to go to London and Paris. I want to go everywhere because of her. Right? I've never been anywhere outside the United States. So I just like, I really wanted to just jump on a plane just watching the show. <laughs> right. I was really worried she was going to bring back some London recipe like uh, blood pudding <laughs> or some banger and mash. Right. But I was excited that she made her, her own traditional food that she likes, the mahi mahi. That she makes like on her own in her own kitchen. Yeah. Right. And in the dorms while she went while she goes to school. Right, exactly. Very good meal. So let's try this. So well, this, this is one, my version in the crock pot of okay. the mahi mahi. So this is the mahi mahi that I'm trying now. Mm -hmm. It's real. juicier than hers, maybe because it's steamed. Maybe so. That's maybe really good. Mm -hmm. It has a good spice to it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the red, pressed red peppers. Mm -hmm. They're very it's good. delicious. But then we did this ahi tuna on the waffle iron. And you dip this in here. Mm hmm. Which is a wasabi and a soy sauce and a ginger powder oh, base. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Two Ooh, completely different, two completely different flavors mm -hmm. there. But it's a great way to have really good fish in your dorm room. Right. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that the dorm room cooking is really the way to go if you have the right appliances. You know, I agree, and especially with the waffle iron and the crock pot. I mean, because they're inexpensive. Exactly. And you can make quick meals with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're now taking entries for our Facebook contest. Post a message on our page with the phrase of the week you see at the bottom of the screen, and you can become a finalist for our giveaway at the end of the semester. You can also check out our Facebook page for contest rules at Homestyle Southern Cooking. Now, I'd like to thank my sponsors, Pearl Brothers, for the great appliances, Marketplace at Joplin Greenhouse for the amazing food that you give us. Okay. And I'd also like to thank my guest, Kristen Hanna. It was great having you. You're so much fun. You really motivated us to travel. And I'd like to thank my crew. Hey, hon. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I couldn't do it without you. <laughs> and thank you to the rest of my crew. And hey, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week on Homestead.